Today's video is brought to you by Inventora. So a few weeks ago, we did a series of videos and I said at the end of the you know series of the week that we should start doing more DIY friendly recipes. And I was at the grocery store the other day getting baking supplies because Soap and Clay Kidlet number two is obsessed with baking. It's a lot, seriously. It's like send help or come over with a fork and eat some of these delicious baked goods because I can't handle it anymore. Anyway, I was in the baking aisle and I saw, you know, just what you do in the baking aisle. So your regular sized oils and lard and shortening and all the things. And so I thought, hey, what a good idea. We should totally make a grocery store soap and calculate how much it's going to cost per bar to do so. So that's what we're going to do today, and we're going to be using Inventora to do it. So it's very fitting that Inventora is the sponsor of today's video. And for those of you who might not know what Inventora is, let's go to a quick recap and we can talk about that before we get into the grocery store soap. Inventora is so much more than just inventory management software. It has taken my business to level awesome. I rely on this every single day because not only does it keep track of all of your inventory, your raw goods, the things that you've made from those raw goods, syncs up with your business platform. So your Shopify, your Etsy, your Wix, your WooCommerce. So you have an accurate record of your inventory on your website, but it's also a great place to store all of your recipes. So you put them in once, you know exactly how much you need for every single recipe, exactly how much it costs down to the ounce. And it also lets you know when you're running low on any of your raw materials and puts together a vendor list so you can place an order with your vendors to make sure that you always have materials on hand. This is such a user-friendly platform. It's super intuitive. It is very cost-effective and it has been a game changer for my business. So check out the link in the description and my affiliate code or go to inventora.com and take your business to Level Awesome today. A software platform for makers made by makers. Thank you so much Inventora for sponsoring. Yeah, it's a super awesome software platform with lots of usability, and I personally love it and use it all the time. So a big thank you to Inventora for not only sponsoring today's video, but also for letting me do the things and show the people how I use the program. But now that we have the Inventora recap done, I'm going to send you the intro so we can talk about this super awesome grocery store soap that we are making today. And I will tell you more about it in just a minute. But before I do, hello. I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for week 19 of year three. And as I said, today we are doing a grocery store soap using oils that we source from the grocery store and showing you just how much it's going to cost per soap with the ingredients that I got from my local grocery store. In my case, it's Fred Meyer. And we're going to be using Inventora to show how all of that works. A few things to keep in mind. I did not pick up any essential oils from the grocery store because they're like $12 for half of an ounce. And I, I am not doing that. That is a terrible idea. And I also recommend that you don't do that. So, you know, get your essential oils from actual soap places or in a pinch, I guess, go to a craft store or just leave it unscented. Even better. And also the lye was not available at my local grocery store. So I did include a price for just like a two pound container of lye from Amazon in all of these calculations. So there's that. I also am not including the cost of the micas that I use to make this soap because micas, A, it's a very negligible cost. And two, it is not a requirement to make this soap. So let's get to the video. We will do all of those things using Inventora to do so. I will show you the making. I will show you the lather. We will talk about all of the things, you know, in the video. Oh, 
Okay, so today we are making grocery store soap, and the reasons behind this are thus. We are trying to do some nice DIY grocery store soap. We like a cost-effective bar, and also I wanted to improve upon the recipe that we had made last week or the week before with the coconut or with the shortening recipe. And so what I had discovered in the shortening recipe, doing a 100% shortening soap, which while it can be cost-effective, I didn't really like the softness of the bar and I really wanted a bigger lather so that's where this recipe was born and here the recipe is so 60% Crisco 30% coconut 10% canola with a 5% super fat 2.4 times water to lie and there is the actual recipe that I you know made for this particular batch of soap so it's going to be 12 bars of soap and the reason why I selected all of these oils well I'm gonna tell you First up, as I said, the Crisco, it was good. It's a cost-effective soap, the shortening soap for sure. Has lots of the palms. So you have the stearic and the palmitic acid within it. You also have quite a bit of your oleic acid within the shortening. And so I didn't want to super go overboard with the moisturizing because that was already in hand. So instead, what I wanted to do was increase the bubble as well as the bar hardening. So that's where the coconut oil as well as the canola oil came into play. And I decided to work with the canola oil because canola oil gets a bad rap. And I really don't understand why. Everybody is always saying, oh, dreaded Jordan spots, blah, blah, blah. It's not the same, blah, blah, blah. I have never had that experience. Literally never. And I have made just thousands and thousands of pounds of soaps that have contained canola oil instead of olive oil or in you know conjunction with olive oil so like a 50 50 blend and i have never had dreaded orange spots as a result of canola i think i've maybe had dreaded orange spots maybe once in the entirety of the entire time i've ever been making soap so canola oil is a very good alternative to olive oil when you are looking for something that is more cost effective because as you're going to see with the oils that i picked up from the grocery store canola oil way cheaper than olive that said, the coconut oil that I picked up, way more expensive than what I could get from, you know, going to Soper's Choice or, I don't know, probably Wholesale Supplies Plus, I guess. I I don't know. I haven't shopped there in forever. Speaking of Wholesale Supplies Plus, um, I also put a scent into this particular batch of soap, which I did not pick up from the grocery store because I'm not going to spend $12 for half an ounce of essential oil. That is not happening. And so... I just went ahead and put in a scent that I have from Sierra Candles. What does that have to do with Wholesale Supplies Plus? Well, here's a fun story for you. I placed an order with Nature's Garden like 10 days ago and Sierra Candles on the same day. I am still waiting for my Nature's Garden order. So Wholesale Supplies Plus is all alive and well in Nature's Garden right now, and I hate it. So there's that. Sierra Candles order, by the way. It came in the next day. To the fragrance bit and how much it costs to make a bar of soap with this recipe, I'm going to give you the cost without the scent and the cost with the scent so you can see how much it actually changes the overall cost of the bar. We're going to have a lot of fun with this. Okay, and on to the pour. And I am doing a rather complicated design in all of this. I'm doing a teardrop just to see what the batter actually does because I don't really do a whole lot with shortening, right? So I wanted to see how thick it was going to get and the answer is it got reasonably thick. I was still okay to pour for a little bit. But anyway, then I just messed it up all over the place and um, there were glops of the scent or the color and what we were playing. It was a disaster of a pour and also not necessary to make this particular soap, so I did not include the price of the micas that I used. Also, the price of a mica is very, very negligible, and while you can use Inventora to blow out that price too, I didn't for these purposes, but it's super an option. But I am going to show you what I did use Inventora for while covering up a large portion of the screen and this awful pour, because it's really just embarrassing. And honestly, I should have changed course at this point and turned this into a this is how you fix trace 
an overly thick batter to follow up with the video from a couple days ago about, you know, trace and emulsion and how to fix it. But I did not do that. So we're just going to cover it up with the Inventora, you know, breakdown. So canola oil at my local Fred Nyer is $10.49 for 128 ounces, which used at 3.8 ounces means it's three cents a bar or almost three cents a bar. Coconut oil is quite a bit more than I'm used to paying, $8.29 for 30 ounces, so it is 26 cents per bar for the coconut, and the Crisco is $10.99 for 48 ounces, so it's a 0.44, so 44 cents per bar. That, combined with the lye that I got from Amazon, also way more expensive than I'm used to, the soaps come in at 98 cents per bar, which is pretty great under a buck for just your basic materials. But since I did not put in the fragrance into that calculation because I did not find fragrance at the grocery store, I'll go ahead and show you that one too. Using mahogany teakwood from Sierra Candles. And so that increases the price from 98 cents to $1.22 a bar. But you can go even wilder with this and actually also include your labor. So I use the Soprentices. They currently make $25 an hour based on how long it takes them to make and cut and stamp an entire batch of, you know, 12 soaps. And so it brings it up to $2.26 per bar. And also just had to really call attention to that. All of the disaster. And um, then that was just the icing on the cake. I love that for me. But yeah, Inventora is a really cool tool to use to really blow out exactly how much you are paying for a bar of soap and you can get as fine detail as you want with all of it. And I really enjoy that because it does give you at a glance the this grocery store soap, you can make a really nice soap for a buck a bar because you don't have to have, you know, scent in your soap. You don't have to have colors in your soap. What you need to have is a soap that cleanses your body and doesn't leave your skin dry and itchy and tight and not fun, you know? And so that's totally achievable just with grocery store oils, which I think is amazing and something that you should definitely, you know, be able to make for people that are just hobbyists and they want to be able to just go make a batch of soap because they saw something pretty on the interwebs. Well, yeah, grocery store oils can produce a really nice bar of soap that's going to be very, you know, cost effective and delightful and you're going to have fun making all the things. So at that point, it's just sourcing your, you know, skin safe micas and, you know, your skin safe fragrances and whatnot if you want to get super fancy, unlike what I am doing, because this is not fancy by any stretch of the imagination. This is a mess, but, you know, I take you along for the mess all of the time because why not? We're all human and sometimes we have really weird pores and this was one of them. Let's go check out the cut and the lather test of this. Okay, and on to the cut of this, and this has sat for 24 hours. First blush, it is already much firmer than the 100% shortening soap that we made, you know, last week. Really like that a lot. We definitely have some nice shininess going on because this was sea popped and gelled, and I am very much liking already, again, that it is more firm. So, you know, win for me. Now, with the addition of the coconut oil, that would be expected. That was real, realistically the one thing when we were making the shortening soap, when we had talked about it, that it was really lacking. It was lacking that hardening, that extra hardening that you're going to get within the coconut, but the coconut also is going to achieve a bigger lather. While the lather was nice and tight and tiny little, you know, dainty, very cute bubbles. I liked it. It felt great on the skin with the 100% shortening soap. I always want a really big lather payout, right? Like I want that immediate instant gratification with the big bubble right away. So putting in the coconut oil is hopefully going to achieve that. Uh, what I did not achieve with any of these bars was a teardrop. So there you go. There's a massive fail. A lot of them look like, like mouths. You could totally do a rolling stone or you know what I mean? The Rolling Stones logo is a is a tongue, right? I think that's right. But anyway, look, you just mess up a teardrop and you could have a Rolling Stones inspired soap. Could be fun, but you know, that was not intentional. Obviously, we need to test the lather on all of this to see if we actually like the bar. Again, it is harder than it was with the 100% shortening. I do expect the coconut to increase the lather and the canola is going to add some more moisture 
like you would expect with an olive oil. And as you can see, there's not any weirdness going on with that bar. Granted, DOS doesn't tend to form right away, but as I said, you guys should have more love for canola. It's You guys are sleeping on this, I'm telling you. But anyway, let's check out this lather as brought to us by Soap and Clay Kidlet number two, who quite likes being able to film the lather test these days, so I'm just letting her do it. Apologies for the weird lighting now and all the twitching of the camera because my eight-year-old is doing the thing and we're going to let her, you know, be awesome and enjoy time with mom. But as you can see, that lather right away, super gorgeous. I love that. Big, beautiful bubble, nice hard bar, and again, grocery store soap. It's under a buck a bar and that is deals, my friends. And there it is, a grocery store soap made from ingredients that I sourced at my local grocery store. And yeah, about a buck a bar. And I love that. Obviously, the price will increase if you're using a scent, which I did show you, you know, just putting in like a Sierra Candle scent, which is technically speaking still local to me. So I could drive over there and get it from Dana if I wanted, but I don't like driving places. So just to give you an idea of how much the price is going to change, it's really not a big difference if you're sourcing your scents in good places, but it is nice to know regardless. And yeah, so a buck a bar, everything you can pick up at your grocery store and a really delightful bar of soap when it's all said and done. This is definitely something that, you know, DIYers or hobbyists can do quite easily if they just get an itch and want to make some soap. But as we can see from that lather, this is a really great starting point. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you had a good time. A big extra special thank you to Inventora for sponsoring. You guys are awesome. Thank you for continuing to partner with me. It really means a lot because I don't actually partner with anybody unless I really, really love the product and I love Inventora. So Sudzers, go check it out. I know a lot of you have and I appreciate that. This is definitely a tool that you should be using. It's going to be saving your booty a lot. I am out of here. I have a million and two things to do. That seems to be the theme for the week, but Mr. Soap and Clay's out of town. So it is the life of a single parent, you know, this week. But thank you so much for joining me for this. I had a lot of fun. I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of Soapy Fun. Bye. What does that sound? No, I don't need to one moment. What was that sound? What is that? What is that sound?